Today, a very simple, straightforward video all about how to compress, when to use it, when not to use it, and how it actually works. Today, again, working on the on and off remix. The last time I showed you how I mix it, like the general mixing. Today it's more about the finer detailed mixing and one of the biggest parts about the finer detailed mixing is definitely compression. So first let's clarify what compression actually is because there's still a lot of misconceptions and a lot of people don't really know what it's doing but they think they know what it's doing. If they knew what it was doing they wouldn't use it incorrectly as a lot of people actually do. So compression is actually making loud parts in a vocal quieter, but just the loud parts. So for example, me right now talking normal volume and me talking quiet, I could put a compressor on top and make sure that the loud part gets compressed, reduced in volume to be equal with the quieter part. And then with the makeup gain of the compressor, you can again make both of them loud. So basically a compressor, you could also say is making the quiet parts loud, but technically correct, it's making the loud parts quieter and then everything loud again. Just imagine a singer with a mic on stage. If they sing really loud, they put the mic a little further away to compensate for them screaming and get closer again once they're quiet again. And this is basically what a compressor can do. There is of course more to it. So um, let's actually open up the, the Logic compressor because it has like one handy feature that makes it extremely easy to understand what a compressor is actually doing. So this right here is the song, just to give you like a little insight to what I'm actually working on at the moment. We got here the guitar part, for example, on this drop part that could need actually some compression. This is a guitar that was recorded. There is a channel EQ on top just to get rid of the low end, a sample delay to make the guitar really wide, and a reverb. Let's maybe just listen to it without the effects. And again with. Pretty simple, straightforward, but as you can already see in the waveform, like it's not perfect. Like it's not all equally loud. A guitar player is sometimes playing softer, harder. In this case, it's already a really, really good guitar player. So it's, you could actually leave it as it is, but a little compression could maybe help to get this note out here, maybe get those little peaks here more into the sound. Here is another one sticking a little bit out and here as well. So it, it just helps to glue everything a little bit together. So let's actually just use the Logic compressor. At the very top, just to, to get it done, there are like different simulations of vintage compressors with different characteristics, different settings, different behaviors, but that's something very, very specific that is more like for actually coloring your sound and giving it maybe a, a certain style that fits more to one time area of, of like music evolution. If you, for example, take a compressor that was used a lot on 80s songs, you might get a more 80s kind of vibe. But let's stick to the very basic, just a platinum digital, a very clean sounding neutral compressor. And if I now just, as it is, turn it into the graph view, you will actually be able to see what the compressor is doing and that's the easiest way to actually get it. So you see up here in the graph, every time the guitar is playing, it's being reduced. So the white line at the top is actually what the compressor is doing. It's basically the singer putting the mic away. And the black at the bottom is of course the audio that we hear, the guitar. And right now it's set so that it's reducing by a tiny bit, always the beginning, the attack part, the loudest part of the guitar. If we change the threshold,
you can already see it's doing a lot more. It's, it's pushing more against the loud parts. So the threshold tells the compressor where actually to start compressing. And the lower you put it, the lower it will start, the more it will actually start to affect. The stuff that is below it won't be affected by the compressor, at least not by the, the, the settings of the comp compressor, but maybe still of the like um, vintage sound of it. The ratio is the next thing that most compressors have as a setting. This is also pretty straightforward. You can see what it's actually doing to the audio file. And you can also actually hear it. The, the, the crazier the ratio, the, the more you actually compress. And now in this extreme setting, we can actually hear already what the attack and release is doing. You can also see it again in the graph. The attack tells the compressor how fast to react to something that is at that threshold. And the release tells it how long it takes to actually stop compressing once there isn't something hitting the threshold. So again, right now the attack is set to 50 milliseconds. So the first tiny, tiny bit of the sound actually gets through. So this way you can increase the attack of a sound by compressing everything except for the first 15 milliseconds and let them through and, and just be louder. So very attack heavy the guitar. Let's reduce it. The compressor immediately picks up the sound. Let's put it slower. can really see that it takes a little while until the compressor starts compressing. And the same actually for the release. You see the guitar sound stops here and it takes a while until it's up again. Let's change it to an extreme setting. You see the slope of getting back is way more flat. So the shorter the release, the, the snappier the compressor with the tag you let through the, the beginning of the sound. The makeup gain is just to make everything loud again because the compression again is actually reducing the loud bits and then you make everything louder. So therefore the quiet parts get loud. You got here a little more, for example, a limiter and like distortion, a mix knob for parallel compression and an output gain, but I think now everything should be clear about compression, at least how it works, what it's doing, how it's affecting the audio. The next is actually when to use it and when not to use it and how to use it stylistically where it's necessary on a song and where you can actually skip using a compressor. But first, let me, let me work a little on the song because if I continue talking, this will actually never get finished. So, all done, best feeling in the world, finishing a song. This one will be released hopefully soon on my own label because it's a remix of one of the Accents artists. But let's actually get back to compressors. There are of course also hardware compressors, outboard gear. You won't need it. It doesn't really change a lot. It, it might sound different, maybe a little bit better, but it's not worth it, the extra cost, the extra step to root everything through it. I sometimes use it, but most of the time I'm really just fine using software compressors. And then of course, to make this guide complete, we need to talk about when to use compression and on what kind of material. So basically the more raw a source is and the more it is imperfect, you need to apply more compression. So for example, the human voice definitely needs the most compression because we can't control it in a way that it's always like same loudness and it also gives it a character 
it's kind of a modern pop kind of sound to compress vocals. That's what we're used to listening to on the radio and in every single track you've ever listened to. If you don't compress your vocal, you're just doing something wrong. Or maybe you're using one of the Waves writing kind of plugins, but it's not the same as compression. So definitely compress your vocals sometimes up to 20, 30 dB of gain reduction. For the attack and release, try to find settings where it sounds natural. Having too much attack is kind of weird, too little, also weird, so kind of somewhere in between. Guitars, acoustic guitars, electronic guitars, yes, compression a little bit less. Drums, you can actually compress quite a lot to get like more out of the, the sound, to just get it up there and also parallel compress all of your drums together in one bus, glues it really well together. So compression again for like the volume stuff, you could also just like automate your vocal and get it to sound like it being compressed, but it would be way, way, way more work. It's not just like making words loud and quiet. It's like every little piece of the waveform and then plus attack release. It's just complicated. Just use a compressor. Also for the coloring, there are a lot of vintage compressors that have like a certain style to it. But before you get into that, first understand how a compressor works. Try a neutral one out, compare it to another one if you even can hear a difference. If you can't, just doesn't make any sense. For all other material, especially if you're producing electronic dance music, you actually don't need that much compression. Those are samples, they've been already compressed. All of your kicks and your sample packs, someone stole them out of another song that was already compressed and mastered, so don't really bother too much adding a ton of compression. There it's really more about gluing things together, putting everything into a bus, a little bit of compression, and also on your master maybe one or two dB just to catch those spikes and like get a little bit more loudness out of your song. I hope I didn't forget anything. If I forgot something about compression, just leave it in the comments for everyone to read it. That's basically it for today. I think I'm really done. I, 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 won't, I won't work again on the song. I already bounced out the pre-master. That's already a good sign. But you know it, producer live, we got like version 12, 13, 14, 15, version one, final mix, and this continues forever and ever and ever, but. Yeah, it should be done.